Welcome to your Campaign Manager 360 Fundamentals training series. In this training, we're going to learn how to create an advertiser. To get started, locate the All Advertisers tab in the left navigation of CM360. From here, click the green New button to start creating an advertiser. We're not going to cover every single advertiser detail, just the ones that are either required or very frequently used. We'll start by giving our advertiser a name. Sometimes advertiser names follow an obvious convention, like when agencies give each client their own advertiser. But defining the architecture doesn't always end here. Agencies and direct marketers often further divide their advertisers when company size or scope increases. Since advertisers are the foundation for tracking conversions and serving ads, we want to make sure you start off on the right foot when creating them. So reach out to us early to talk about your naming conventions for advertisers. For this training, I'm going to act as an agency and name my advertiser Honeycomb Hills in honor of my beekeeping hobby. Then I'll give my advertiser an email address where the system will send informational messages and alerts. Most of us won't have permission to change billing profiles in CM360, so we're going to skip the billing section. Next, we can optionally add a landing page URL suffix. This is not the advertiser's landing page. We'll get to those in the next video. Instead, the URL suffix consists of all the tracking parameters you want to include from any analytics platform that aren't already being collected by Google Click IDs or Display Click IDs. Here's where you can append UTM parameters to the URL, which will then pass analytics data into Google Analytics. Or you can append any other parameters from other analytics systems. We recommend you copy and paste these suffixes to avoid mistakes. If you want, you can also build a suffix by clicking the Add Query Parameter button, typing the key and value, and selecting the relevant campaign manager provided macros. The suffixes added at the advertiser level will cascade down into every landing page URL suffix field at lower hierarchy levels, though you can overwrite or remove them at lower levels if needed. You can also skip this field at the advertiser level if there aren't any suffixes that are universally applicable to all levels of this advertiser. Now let's look at the Creative Groups section. Creative Groups are a great way to divide up creatives for reporting purposes within the same advertiser, based on things like subbrands, language, content, and more. Creative Groups do not affect how your creatives serve, and you can apply up to two Creative Groups to each creative asset. I'm going to build a Creative Group for my English language creatives and one for my Spanish language creatives. To build a Creative Group, click the New Creative Group button, in either the Creative Group 1 or Creative Group 2 table. In the Name column, hover your mouse in the blank cell and click the pencil icon. Then type a name for the Creative Group. Click away from the group name to save it. Be careful before saving though, since you can't delete a Creative Group once you build it. Let's move on to Associations. If you have a Google Studio account or an Ads Creative Studio account, which are tools that help build and manage creative assets, you can link that account to CM360 here. We are not going to dive into these tools in this video, but if you'd like to learn more, check out the links in the video notes below. We can see some of our advertisers' properties right now, but not all of them. To see the rest, I need to save the advertiser first. So I'll go ahead and click Save. And now let's look at a new property that showed up in the middle of our list, event tags. These tags are provided by your third-party vendors and tell CM360 to send specific data to those vendors for reporting. You can create two types of tags. Impression tags notify the third-party vendor when an ad appears, and click tags notify them when a click occurs on your site. Let's create an example tag to track clicks. Under the Click Event Tag section, I'll click on Advertiser Tags, then click New Click Event Tags. Provide a name for your tag and the tag URL, then click Save. You can follow the same process to create Impression Event Tags. For every advertiser, you can apply up to 20 Impression Tags and 20 Click Tags, and you can add up to 50 more of each at the campaign level, but we'll get there later. By default, these settings cascade down to any campaigns built under this advertiser, but you can change the Impression Tags application setting to Apply Manually if you want to pick and choose the campaigns or ads this tag applies to. Finally, we have third-party measurement. 
if you're using a verification partner for brand safety, like IAS or Double Verify. This section automates the process of wrapping tags for brand safety purposes. To enable this setting, click the checkbox next to Tag Wrapping, then select the partner from the drop-down list that appears. From here, work with your partner to obtain the trafficking code. Now that we've explored these additional advertiser properties, I'm going to click the green Save button at the top of the page, and then navigate back to the All Advertisers tab to see my new advertiser. Continue to the next video to learn about landing pages. <laughs> <laughs>